G'day guys, there's no moral victories for this football club of ours anymore. We had that, we had that last year when we when we bowed out in the prelim final and we'd had a an extraordinary run which came to an end um, at the hands of the Brisbane Lions. And I think we most of us were were willing to, you know, concede at that time that we were pretty banged up and, you know, we faced really good opposition, but we took a fair bit of, I don't know, a bit of a moral victory out of 2023. Um, I think we're well and truly sort of over that now. We are, we are that team now. And this, this game last night against Richmond and how the mighty have fallen, um, and this is no knock on Richmond because that's just where they're at at the moment, but... I just can't believe it's only taken two or three seasons for Richmond now to be that team that uh, I suppose being somewhat patronised um, and to hear the way their supporters were just wrapped with the effort and we were brave and, you know, this and that and love the boys and all that, which is, which is great. You support your team through thick and thin and all that type of stuff. But it wasn't that long ago that Richmond would have looked at that performance and been just quite savage on their team that they couldn't get the job done. And we're not that team anymore. I would have, you know, I, I, I disliked our performance last night. I disliked it regardless of the four points, regardless of us winning that game. I I would have come off the fucking long run. And I mean the long run if we'd been beaten last night. And I feel like to a certain extent, okay, harshly critiquing this game. I really do, because as much as I think it's huge to be two and zip, um, didn't expect to win last week, although in a position where we're in, we should be going expecting to win every good game of football we play. But I, I, I didn't think we would be two and zip. So that's a huge positive, a huge positive. And we look a, we look a, a very close football unit. And I suppose when you're winning close games like we are, it does, I suppose, galvanise the group. And, and, and it's, it's been an incredible, incredible uh, sort of um, time for us watching these really, really close games. And yeah, I, I, it, it, it is a journey. Um, it, it is a journey. But I don't, I don't look at us now as that team that we need to be. We need to be going, oh, just fantastic effort anymore. Like it's just a fantastic effort. I think we should be, we should be in the in the position now to be expecting more. No one can tell me last night that Michael Boss wasn't showing a level of frustration. He really went to his his, his troops at three quarter time and put it on them. Um, so, yeah, great that we could lift. To get the job done, um, but that was that was a really frustrating night, um, a really really frustrating night. And if ever we deserve to lose a game of footy, it was last night. Um, and I'm and I can understand Brisbane Lions supporters saying exactly the same thing about their football team last week against us. They would have been saying we fucking deserved to lose that game. And if we, if, if Richmond had got over the line last night in the dying seconds, okay, I would have been in a position to say we, we thoroughly to deserved to lose that. So I don't sit here necessarily today and, and go, did Richmond deserve to win that game? Not necessarily. Um, but we were such our worst fucking enemy last night guys our worst enemy um that second quarter where we just dominated and i mean dominated smashed them and we looked a far superior team and although richmond had some good good moments okay uh we had nearly 20 more inside 50s or whatever it was 65 to 50 i know we were beaten in clearances our midfield was a little bit down um, beaten in contested possessions, but on the outside we actually we looked we looked quite good, and to be not be able to execute that dominance in that quarter, and then to leave leave the door open for this 
for that team, the Richmond Football Club, um, was was fucking frustrating. And I, um, <laughs> it, it wasn't joyous when that final siren sounded. It was just pure relief, pure relief that we had sort of gotten away with one. Um, and with two thirty, two thirty minutes remaining on the clock, I was transported back to last week's game, and and, and just thought that Richmond, Richmond could steal this game. They could take it out of our hands because of the way we were playing, and the way you know. And you go back to last week, the way Brisbane really left the door open for us to take that game away from them, and that's the way. That's the way I saw it. Um, and while Richmond will get the, they'll get the platitudes um, in regards to you know having players down and you know being probably the underdogs in that game and maybe not at the same, I suppose development what our group is. Um, yeah, if they want to, if they want to use that as a moral victory, that's fine. But I don't really care about that. I only care about us. And right here, right now, two and zip is a very, very strong position to be in. But if we take our back selves back to last year, it's not dissimilar. Really, it's not dissimilar. We started off a draw, then we beat the Cats in a close one where we felt like we just fell over the line. Um, so the test will come. The test will come. And we talk about, we talk about Oh, not me, but Michael Voss and the president talks about wanting to be a more consistent home and away football team. And yeah, I think last night's game, one of the positives were we were relatively consistent across the four quarters. There wasn't huge momentum shifts. Um, but the consistency comes now. And we, were, we are, mark my words, we will drop games. We will drop games and we will drop... We will drop a game that we're expected to win. Um, but we need to build that consistency because it feels a little bit the same as last year. And that's okay. That's early, maybe early season, uh, working on things and getting players in the form and working on your fitness and the guys look gassed and all that type of stuff. But it was similar. It feels eerily similar to last year, although that incredible performance against Brisbane last week just sort of, I don't know, it just is still is still mind-blowing. But that game last night against the Tigers felt like last year, our inability to really execute. Um, does cause me a few concerns. And there were a number of players that were down last night. We did carry quite a few players, but there were some outstanding individual performances. But the thing about this game, guys, is when, when, and maybe this is a maturity thing, and maybe it is just the fact that there are players in this football team that look at their situation and look at the guys that are coming potentially into the team, and they're thinking, shit, I've got to three-quarter time and I've hardly fucking fired a shot. I better extract the finger out of my arsehole and uh, get to work. And yeah, I think there was some, there was some blokes who, who went above and beyond for the four quarters. And then there were guys that chipped in with, with some really good moments. Um, so what I'll do is I'll talk through each player. I'll give a, a quick synopsis on their game. Um, and let's just see where we're at because we get the week off. Um, don't know if that's such a good thing after only playing two games, but it is what it is. And we are in a, a position of strength because it means, you know, we've got some players coming back into this team, but we've started strongly. We need to, you know, we want to go three zip and beat North Melbourne, but we could potentially rest players again um, or give them an extra week. We'll just have to wait and see with that. Ollie Hollands is battling. He's battling. He's doing it. Last night was actually worse than, than the Brisbane game. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. He looks a little bit off the pace. Doesn't physically physically look strong. Um, and he's just not winning enough of the ball. And I think it, that's one side of the ground. His wing is one side of the ground where we're really losing out. So 
I don't think he can afford... I think they'll go with him again, but I don't think he can afford to continue on with that form. But the problem we have is, what's Jackson Binns doing? Is he knocking down the door? How did he go in the VFL last night? How did he go in the VFL the week before? So who can play that position? But yeah, he's battling. He really is. And he's one guy that I thought would really stamp himself this season. But we have to remember, he's still he's still very young and he's still very slight. But um, yeah, not playing well. Thought Chero was poor. Let's let's put it on the table. But he stepped up in the last quarter and kicked a goal. But I thought he was really down on impact. In fact, he looked really slow, really slow. Um, one paced. He only had uh, the 15 disposals. Um, yeah, I thought he was soundly beaten through the midfield. Um, very ordinary night. Second up for Zach Williams. Uh, not bad, not bad. Um, I think he'd, he'd appreciate getting that second one out of the way and now having the week's rest. Did a couple of nice things without setting the world on fire. I think Matthew Kennedy is an interesting watch. Better than last week. Um, got it. Got into some open space early and kicked a goal, but I feel like he can go to another another level. I really do. He's he's another one. It's just super slow. Just super slow. Um, didn't think it was a great night. Foggy a little bit down. Did some nice things, a couple of good tackles early in the game, but yeah, didn't think it was a great night by Lockie. Cripper was huge. Um, when the chips were down throughout the game, it was always Cripper who was stepping up. 31 disposals and four clearances, seven tackles to the skipper. Um, he Once again, he led from the front. You know, was it a perfect game from Cripper? No, but I'm t I speak about this all the time with Patrick Cripps now. It's not necessarily he needs to be he needs to be the main man anymore. He needs to lead from the front and do all the right things. I can't remember him making too many mistakes last night. Um, Harry, super, super again. He is, he is in terrific form. Um, and I mean terrific form. He's, he's doing a lot right. He's going into the ruck. Um, creating a presence. He's, he's marking the ball at its highest point. thought it was another fabulous game by Harry McCoy. Just went out of the game a little bit after after halftime, I think. Um, but, yeah, he's had a terrific start to the season. Best game I've seen Mitch McGovern play for the football club. The only downer for me, and I don't need to, to, to point the finger, but there was that moment where, yeah, it was a little bit, Ooh, okay, um, I'd love to give him the benefit of the doubt for that, but it didn't look great. And I think it somewhat, oh, it somewhat's in the back of my head. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you lost it in the lights. I don't know. But it, yeah, it didn't look like it didn't look great. But he's kicking and he's marking and he's pace. He's pace. He's quick. Mitch McGovern. He's kicking was superb last night. He had a. Oh, I think he was our best player. I thought when we were when they got off to that sort of we we started well, then they had that big patch towards the end of the first quarter, and then we got going in that second. It was him. He was he was rebounding everything. The Conning was beaten by Nan Curvis early, but fought his way back into the game in that last quarter. Um, we're always talking about breakout games for Tom DeConning. I don't think it's necessarily breakout. Games to Tom McConaughey. It's just, just experience, 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 experience. And the more he does those types of things on the ground where he takes marks and he has a presence, just builds confidence. Um, he's a big, big, big unit. Um, I didn't think he necessarily got butchered and bullied around last night. It just that Nan Curvis was up for the fight early and he was just a little bit off his tucker. But he ended up with 28 hit outs and 15 possessions. Um, and had a huge last quarter and, and, and was one of the reasons why we got over the line. Akers, uh, probably not as, as influential as he was the week before, but got out and helped out defensively. Um, 17 disposals, Fantasia really struggling. Uh, had tiny little snippets. Uh, did we lose faith in him? Probably with Motlop coming back in, he's probably the one on the chopping block, was subbed out of the game. and No goals from two games. Um, I'm not giving up on... Orazio Fantasia, I think the positive with him is that he's getting through games with his body. So, yeah. Carol, he's... Uh, I've got egg on my face, guys. He's he's doing all the right things. A couple of times there where there was maybe one too many handballs in the chain and he was on the end of it, which he panicked 
a little bit, but he's winning clearances, going into the middle, and he looks the part. Um, early days still, but good signs. The same with Brody Kemp. Still having Brody Kemp moments, but he's doing other things where you go, wow, wow, shit, this guy can actually, he can actually play. Um, so I'm hoping like hell that he can he can bridge that gap between the bad Brady Kemp and the really good Brady Kemp, and he's 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 getting there. I thought Durden was pox when he came on, Corey Durden. I was actually savage on him. He he didn't lay a tackle. I know he spoiled once and he fed a handball out, but I just thought he for a guy that was as fresh as a daisy, uh, he did sweet fa. Um, when he came on, and I know it's hard in a game like that to come on and make an impact, but everyone was fucked. He was fresh, and he came on bouncing around, high-fiving. Uh, nah, nah, no good. Newman, good. Thought he was really good, solid down back. Cunningham had moments through the midfield, through the middle of the ground. But you look, 12 disposals, 12 disposals. David Cunningham felt like he had more than that. Um, Georgie Hewitt, solid, solid as a rock. But I thought our midfield, guys, was a little bit down, as it was in the first half last week. Seems to mean we've, we've gone from being a really hard defensive team to trying to add to that, that transition game, and we've somewhat lost our ability to win, win the real hard ball of stoppages. Okay, so that is interesting. Kerno, um, yeah, I think it was, I mean... You'll take those. You'll take those goals, and you'll take that impact. But I, I feel like Charlie can go up another level. Lewis Young, <sighs> he said seventeen disposals. Can't tackle. Just can't fucking tackle. Jordan Boyd had some nice little moments last night. Should have kicked a goal. Yeah, I thought he did okay. Saab was huge. With as I say, the best, the best defender in the game at closing down space. Um, Oh, he's just chips in with goals. And frankly, if, if Harry and Charlie aren't kicking and we need someone else to, and he's one who's just, he's clutch, he's clutch. Matthew always is clutch. And while he is, continues to be clutch, he probably continues to remain in this team. And Matthew Cottrell, a little bit like Ollie Hollands, is just down on output and down on form. And But his game's saved because he, he kicks an important goal at the right time. and um, But I think we could all expect to get a little bit more from Matthew Cottrell. Tell me what you thought of last night's game, guys, in the comments below, and I will speak to you soon. Catch ya.